Welcome back to Psych Up Live. We're, we're talking with distinguished professor, Dr. Joel Evans. He's a branding and marketing expert. We were just talking about resumes. And But before we go any farther, and I have lots of questions, and I know, I'm know i sure I'm thinking of some of the same that our listeners are, um, Dr. Evans, how would you be generous enough to give your um, email for those who want some feedback on resumes or jobs? How else can... Listen is reach you. You have such a wealth of knowledge. The, the best way to reach me is Joel, J-O-E-L, prof, P-R-O-F, that's one word, at hotmail.com. Okay. Um, and I would encourage you, if, if, this, if this stuff sounds interesting to you, is to go to my Evans on Marketing, one word, E-V-A-N-S, on Marketing, uh, dot com. And uh, I've got about 1,400 posts on there. Uh, There's stuff related to careers, every aspect of marketing and social media. And if you, if you uh, go into the search engine for the blog and type in self-brand, you'll see how many different things I've got there. Great, great. But That's I great. welcome you to follow me. I have interesting posts all the time. He does. Um, so let me ask this question just as we round up um, resume. So you... you Mention, uh, you know, in our conversations, citing distinctive skills. So if I was um, a, the head of the um, tennis uh, team at a, um, a college and I was the captain and I'm really exceptional in that, or I was a musician throughout school, those kinds of things, should they be even on a resume? Okay. So what you have to do is think about how can I put one of these things in the context that will matter to an employer. So to say professional um, musician or captain of the tennis team by itself doesn't mean anything. But with descriptors may mean a lot because it shows you're above and beyond the, the, the you know, uh, average person. So if you took the one with the tennis captain, I would want to see you know, able to maintain a great GPA while uh, participating uh, in practice and matches 25 hours a week and going to school full time. Wow, if I'm great. the uh, if I'm, <clears throat> if I'm the musician, um, I, I would want to probably say full time musician um, who uh, you know performs on weekends and does a full time job. At the same time. Yep. So what you're doing then is not highlighting that you're a musician. What you're highlighting is that you're working your rear end off and that you understand what hard work is and you're motivated. So you're working full time at your job and you're motivated for the thing that's your passion, which is music. So so just putting musician alone is not sufficient. It's got to have a descriptor that would have a hook that would appeal to a company. You have to be able to show added value to their company by whatever you're putting down. Right, and I think that you mm. can. Well, yes. One of the things, one of the things that, you sh- that you shouldn't put down is um, uh, skilled in uh, Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. Because just about 99% of college students <laughs> graduating right. today can do that. So capable of doing advanced Excel spreadsheets is a different thing. Skill. Right. And that's a valuable one. Mm, it's terrific what you're sharing. Now, let's take it to the next step. That is, if I've been in a field a very long time and I want to change, and we think, I know you and I have talked about veterans and how much and how skilled they are when they're in service. And many for, for years, for four years, three years, some are still in the reserves, they really face quite a problem in the workplace. How do we help be it a veteran or someone move from one set of skills actually back to the job place in a, in a completely different area? Okay, so you, you certainly would have to, have to acquire, whether it's through education or whatever, some kind of credential that's in the field you want to go into. There's got to be some linchpin. But you also have to look, at, you know, let's suppose that you were in the military or that you were a manager at a power plant and now you want to get into the service business, is that, yes, uh, this whole conversation that we've had is about how to be 
uh, distinctive. Well, but it's also about the skill set that we have that will enable us to do a job. And I think sometimes, uh, quite often, with uh, military people who have been my students, uh, and some of them could be in, have been in the military five years, some could be 25, is they don't recognize that that, that, was, a, that was a job. And a job would spe- uh, specify tasks. So if they were a sergeant or a lieutenant or whatever, they could have been supervising 10 people, 15 people, 20 people. They could have been developing plans uh, for in the field. Um, interacting with people, there were so many uh, transferable skills. So what we have to do is look at, look at ourselves, this is this introspection again, and say, what is it that I want to highlight? And, mm-hmm. and, what we, and we need to do this in a way that um, we appreciate that there are certain skills that transfer. Right. Being a good manager is being a good manager. Being a good planner is being a good planner. Mm-hmm. Great. So Great. Uh, I, yeah, I think that people um, sometimes um, underestimate um, the jobs that they've had, and I think people, particularly in the military, some of the uh, some of them are convinced that that it's a detriment to have been in the military when you apply for a job. And my experience is that many employers love having military people because they well. know they're serious. They're serious. They always show up for work. They're well trained. They're motivated. You know all of those other skills. So well, that's another thing, stereotype what, that's bad. One thing that we that many of our military can say is they have worked successfully under tremendous stress. I mean, life and death stress sometimes. So they bring a skill set that not only is valid, but they also bring the ability to regulate stress when when carrying it out. So I'm I'm, I'm loving that. That is that correct. You, you know, that you, you, you talked Absolutely. about translating it. Yeah. So now let's talk about something that hits many, many folks, and that is I, I want to retire, but I don't want to travel or play golf, and I'm not a clue of how I can sell myself to do something different and interesting. What would you just suggest as a general, maybe a rule for those who are approaching retirement or in it and at the moment are bored? Okay, um, I've done a lot of thinking about this for myself because of the stage of life that I'm in. So I think that the first thing that we have to do is to ask ourselves, what do we want to be active in retirement? What do we want to do? Do we want to be a volunteer? But boy, there are a lot of nonprofits out there that want volunteers. Do we want to travel more? Do we want to work part-time in something that we don't care about the money, we just think it would be fun. Uh, do we want to be a mentor? Uh, do we want to be more, I, and I hear this all the time, I want to be more active as a grandparent, so they want to make sure they're around. Want to, want to serve on a local school board, or you know, there's something called SCORE, which is a group for uh, uh, retired business people who give free advice to others. There are all types of organizations. So what, what do we think we'd like to do? And then I think what we, have to, what we need is uh, a different, and, and for many of us, a new self-brand that we project to others. Mm-hmm. So if I can just relate this to myself, here's my personal example. So I'm reaching a point where I'm thinking about retiring from my full-time job in a couple of years. My wife thinks that I am, uh, I'll go crazy going, <laughs> into, uh, going into retirement. And, and, and to tie this into our discussion... That's her perception of my self-brand. Right. Mine is quite different, okay? (laughs) I have a good idea of what I want to do then. So I want to recast my self-brand. I want to reinvent myself. I do want to teach at least one graduate course uh, a year, so I want to keep that part in there. I have decided that my passion is going to be to do uh, volunteer work for a health-related nonprofit organization. That really drives me. Uh, I want to stay active in social media uh, because I really enjoy that. I want to keep going to the gym uh, because I believe that uh, many baby boomers are far different than their parents in terms of um, not wanting to age and doing whatever we can Mm -hmm. um, not to age. Um, I, I, and, I, and I enjoy going to the gym because I mingle with a lot of people there. And I know that I'll come up with more stuff as I get uh, closer to retiring besides traveling more. Well, one but thing... I know one, for sh- 
Can I just add one, one thing? Yes, yeah, sure, sure. But Go the ahead. one thing I know for sure, uh, because this is a this is a subject area that you know I I live, is that I will have a strong impact on how others see me. They may not always see me the same, but I'm going to be projecting who I am. That's mm. that's a passion too. It's well, I'm loving what you're saying, and I'm also loving that you're suggesting you're not thinking of just one thing. I mean, and that's that's a. a That's great in terms of the diversity you bring to a new job if you're a young college graduate. And you're saying you're going to be doing many, many different things. So if one thing isn't quite okay, something else might turn up. But um, uh, we're we're going to have to stop. But I think you've really given, Dr. Evans, you've really given us so many invaluable ideas in terms of branding for personal and professional success. I think our listeners know they can reach you, and um, knowing Dr. Evans very well, that would be a very valuable thing to do. He's a very, very okay. giving. 